Hey everybody, this is Rich and you're watching my YouTube channel where I get on fantastic, creative, wonderful people to play tabletop RPGs with me. Um, I'm not going to say I'm excited, but that's kind of a lie. But I always say I'm excited. Today, we're going to be playing a one-shot of a freely downloadable game. It is 25 pages, over half of which is just some suggested character uh, NPCs. So it's really short easy to pick up light uh, and light-hearted game called Havoc Brigade, which you already know because you're either watching this live or you're reading the YouTube thing that says Let's Play Havoc Brigade. But it is from a Patreon uh, campaign or a Patreon uh, uh, project creator, Grant Howitt, who's an Australian, and I've had the fortune of playing it with him one time. This is the first time I've run it. Luckily, I have some amazing people with me as part of the Intercontinental Group of Awesome. So we're going to introduce each one of them, and they'll talk about their particular characters. Now, in this game, uh, they just to warn you, there could potentially be extremely stupid things happening and some people laughing. So if either of those offend you, what's your deal? Seriously. Like, this is crazy. So this is, uh, this is Havoc Brigade, and I'm going to start... Uh, with with Yona. Yona, uh, what's the character you're playing? And tell us a little bit about uh, him or her. Uh, I'm playing the Ox Iron Clan, Clan Proiser, and I'm a huge she-orc, so I'm stupid, and I just want to smash stuff. You know. Ox smash. Yes, this yes. This is the picture of... <laughs> to give you a sense of scale, she's awesome! Cool. Uh, so, tell us now. Part of, of each of these characters is they have a few skills and they have a few drives. So, can you elucidate us or educate us on uh, what uh, she's good at and uh, what she wa likes to do? Yes, my skills are hitting stuff, shouting, and being tough. And my drives are to prove just hitting things is a viable alternative to complicated battle plans, which is probably true, uh, and to fight a powerful enemy champion. So, let's go, smash stuff. Yes! You are stretching, Yona. I cannot wait to see you <laughs> as the bruiser. Uh, next is uh, Andrea, who is uh, over on this side of the pond. So now we have an equal mix. We could almost do, like, some kind of cross-Atlantic thing. Or not. Andrea's not, not in Chicago. Chicago. Not in yeah. Chicago. <laughs> not in Chicago. We'll get that straight eventually. So, Andrea, who are you playing, and tell us about them. I am playing Profanius. Profanius is a devout paladin of Bog al Karak, who is the god who pulled the first orcs from the ground, like parsnips. Which means I have a holy parsnip, and I will be using that. Nice. Is that actual equipment? Yes, yes, the sacred parsnip ah, of Bog al Karak. Sacred parsnip of Bog al Karak. Uh, what are your drives? What do you want to My do? drives are to spread the word of Bog al Karak. Um, in some fashion, the scriptures are a little vague, and to prove the supremacy of Bog al Karak over inferior gods, which is ludicrous because, of course, he is supreme. And I'll just have to either hit or shoot or be cruel in his name to anyone who disagrees. Nice. I think there will be some disagreement that takes place. Uh, and last but not least is Alex. Uh, Alex, hopefully you can screen share uh, what character uh, yeah. Yeah. you're playing. Um, I think I can. Uh, where I'm going to do it? the presentation thing on you. Present to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, ah, there it is. There's the share. There we go. Is that sharing? No. I have a black screen. Aha! Oh, there we go. Ah. I am the goblins, um, com composing of stinky feet, stabs, snot, coats, bangs, and goblet. Oh, and of course, there's Harry George, the hedgehog, and dog, the dog. Nice. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So you are playing six characters. I am, and I have no idea how I'm going to roleplay that. <laughs> I can't wait to find out. <laughs> Uh, so, even though one of the, the three sets of characters are actually goblins, uh, this is a game where all the player characters are ostensibly orcs or part of the orc nation. And I'm going to read a little bit here. 
Uh, <clears throat> this is box text. Please don't interrupt me with your like thoughts or characterizations. Uh, the war's been going on since before the characters were spored. The humans to the south have been pushing their people further and further back into the mountains over generations of warfare. Clan board borders have been rewritten and erased, and the great orc families are reduced to a nation of refugees. Please imagine like some like I don't know some kind of violin music of sadness, or perhaps like some taiko music of reflection. Um, uh, but these, uh, the nation of refugees have banded together for security in the cold mountains in the north. But no more. The Grand Warlord, Skull Smasher, has united the tribes under a single banner and by using revolutionary military techniques has started to push back. The Havoc Brigade is a crack squad of orcs tough enough and smart enough to infiltrate human cities and get out alive. Thanks to an orc's natural incl inclination towards chaos, the mess they leave in their wake earned them the title of Havoc Brigades. Amongst the human guards in the region, Skull Smasher liked it, so he adopted it as their official name. They have badges. The Havoc Brigade brings together the greatest representatives of the fractured orc clans, emissaries and other from other countries and races, and a stack of goblins that no one had the heart to kill. So, uh, that is the brief bit. Orcs don't have traditional genders, as humans know them, because they reproduce asexually by spreading spores. For those of you who like certain other games that may sound familiar, uh, it was credited by Grant when he wrote the game, so don't get all crazy about that. And uh, as far as goblins go, they're androgynous in the same way street urchins are androgynous. Humans figure there might be a gender under all that filth and stolen clothing, but they're too busy guarding up their corn purses to care either way. All right, uh, so the three of you have been brought, I'm sorry, the eight of you, actually the two of you and the goblins just show up, are in the tent of the great orc warlord Skull Smasher. <clears throat> uh, so he brought you into his tent, which uh, he, he's dressed very Mongol, so he's got big furry shoulder pads and a big furry hat. Uh, and he's got around his neck, well, I was going to say elf ears, that's a little grisly. So I'm going to say that around his neck is some war trophies, such as a rattle that was taken from a slightly fussy baby. <clears throat> he calls you together and he says, Profanius and Ox, and you other lot. Hello. <laughs> shut up, shut up. You're like children. Seen and no. not heard. Most of the Havoc Brigade is called out sick, so the three of this eight of the two of you and the rest of you will be heading. Hello. Out. Shut up, you. That's enough. All right. The rest of you will be heading to the city of Freiburg now. That is a human city. You are looking for a dignitary, and I want you to kidnap him. He's a prince. Bring him back here. And once he's here, we will question him for all of his military plans so that we can push them back. This is the first step in taking the city of Freiburg, so it's very important that you cause chaos, get the prince, Come back here with however many of you survive. Are there any questions from orcs? Can we smash things? That's preferred. Great, let's go. Any other questions? Profanius, do you bless this? Of course I do. He takes out his little parsnip. In the name of Bog Al Karak, we will succeed. We have a map. That we've stolen from a merchant. I'll give that to you now. Yoink. Which is included with the adventure. <clears throat> well, I'll leave the planning to you because you are my crack squad. I'm going to be getting drunk. Good luck. Oh, oh, you might need his name. 
Uh, Prince Theodore Holstein. He's at the palace at the center of town. There's some kind of party going on. So, uh, that should be very easy. I imagine this will... Alcohol? Alcohol? Mm. Oh, yeah, those little things talking all the time. They never stop. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you've been summoned and then uh, ex- uh, expelled from Skull Smasher's tent. You've been given a map and a mission. That's really all you need. The dirty three quarters of a dozen you are. What is it that you uh, you wish to do? You, coming up with a plan here would be uh, useful. Remember that uh, causing chaos and mayhem works to your benefit. And the mechanics of the scheme are very simple. You will, when you try to do a thing, you will roll a six-sided die. If you roll a four, five, or six, you succeed at that thing, as long as it's physically possible. You gain other dice uh, to your roll from skills, equipment, uh, drives, and then at some times you can cause mayhem, which adds a lot of dice. There's also the capability for you to uh, give someone a re-roll. And you can also tell someone else on your team what to do. And if they do it, they get, uh, they get a bonus as well. Any questions about the mechanics and how you do things? No. Not right now. Cool. When we get to combat, we'll talk about that. It's not terribly complex. Ah, so the orc tribes are all uh, encamped on the cold uh, mountains here. So there are a lot of fires, and uh, a number of orcs are standing around talking. But of course, you guys have a lot of respect, except for the goblins. No respect. But the, <laughs> the two of you, lots of respect. Of course. You're the Havoc Brigade. You're, you're awesome. Well, I assume Goblet is probably sitting on Ox's head, attempting to eat the map. <laughs> uh, happily, just chewing away. Axe, would you like to do something about this? Small the cleric is probably Not trying to steal the turnip. I will just pick him up and just as far as I can. <laughs> <laughs> you succeed. Oh, you know what? This is not going to cause damage, but I do want to see how far you throw. Uh, <laughs> how far you throw? Which of the goblins was this one? This was Snot of the cleric. No, this was Goblet. 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 Okay, so this is just going to be a straight six-sided roll because I don't think you want to waste any equipment on it. If you think no. that drive applies, though, you know, that's up to you. <laughs> I guess I can add. I'll add my. Can I add my role in opposition of swarming over blokes? <laughs> I think my to prove just hitting things is viable alternative to complicated battle plans, definitely. That sounds good. Okay. So, two d six is right. Yes. And we'll Aww. go with ice die six. Oh, it appears that you attempt to throw him. What is it that you do in response, little goblin? He disappears into her helmet. Is it her? Oh is it, no, yes, we don't know. Yes. It's, 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 it's either it. Yes. Just because Ox has declared it, Ox is female. Yeah. Like Ox I just is female. Goblet uh, disappears into the helmet. The kind of the map kind of just getting yanked. It trying to get yanked in through one of the <laughs> slots. Or... All right, but the map the map does fall. It wafts to the oh. floor, but you are you are securely in uh, Ox's helmet and armor, which is well, going to be very I, beneficial for you. I will try to fish him out, and I'm going to sit on him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how you wiggle your way okay. out. Okay, <laughs> swarming over blokes, hiding, and <laughs> creating a distraction. Well. I think uh, I think that sounds like an interesting oh. contest. Please clear dice. Oh, okay. Oh, One and two. Uh, yeah. So let's see how uh, Ox uh, grabs. Oh, oh this time I will succeed. I'll go further into the suit. 
<laughs> where you, so you were able to fish the goblin out of your helmet. Um, a little bit of hair comes along with it, and you sit Get upon back. him. Are you are you looking to hurt him? Because you know, if you wish, you could just mash him and he's dead. I Which will. Is okay. Of course I will. Damn it! He was trying to chew my head. <laughs> All right, so uh, you're down to five goblins. <laughs> Starting I'm out sure well. <laughs> I'm sure this wasn't the initial plan. We weren't supposed There's to. There's some the whispering goblins. amongst the goblins. <laughs> Need another one. Got Harry George. Uh, he's a uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Is there a roll for healing, or is I just? Uh, because you're in the orc encampment, there are goblins aplenty. This is just the elite six. Five. <laughs> Five, sir. <laughs> so you are welcome to recruit another goblin. It's no problem. Uh, really, though, you only have enough rations for four, so you should probably stick to six. <laughs> so what's the name of the sixth goblin that you pick up out of the uh, encampment? Toppy. Coffee? He has, a big top he has a top hat. Toppy. Nice. Top hat. He's basically wearing it as a suit because there's a hole in the top where his head can poke out. <laughs> That's amazing. So the, the brim is like a skirt? Yeah. That is that is splendid. Dude. Okay, there we go. This is so good. I love Toppy. Now, Toppy is the leader. Why, why was Toppy. he not part of the group? Actually, I like Toppy, the sound of Toppy. He was actually called Toffee, but Toppy I like. <laughs> Sorry. It's a goblin. I don't pay much attention to their names because it's <laughs> so expendable. Uh, so why was Toffee, Toffee not part of the original six? Um, hmm. He He's a little bit of a gambler, and there was other goblins. They were racing slugs. Were they on the slugs, or were they just putting slugs down and betting on who would win? They were throwing slugs. Nice. That's awesome. Cool. That's so, really cool, slug racing. Cool. So he's done with the slug racing, and now he's going on this fantastic quest to Freiburg to get uh, the prince. Hmm. Good. So, uh, Profanius, are you going to perhaps say a blessing? Um... Well, after after I pick up the map, because I'm kind of ignoring everyone else at this point. Cool. So what do you do? <laughs> Their antics. I am trying to come up with a battle plan. Very good. I'm looking at the map. I'm assuming I'm assuming that because he's a prince, we'll find him at the Great Palace. That is a fair assumption. Do you say that aloud? Oh yeah, Profanius. Well, Profanius always talks out loud because you know. The louder you talk, the better Bog Alcarok can hear you. Okay, so let's go. We don't need no stinking plans. Let's go. Stinking plans! Exactly, Everyone comes stinking up plans. All the goblins. I am quickly uh, presenting the, the map for those who want to look. Uh, so you guys can take a look at that if you wish. Mm -hmm. So where does Profanius, who seems to be the one who will be making some kind of plan, where do you want to go here and try to enter? Ooh, there's an arena. We can go fighting there. Yeah, I do I do think probably the best way in is the Grey Gate, which is sort of up in the upper right-hand corner. Okay. That's the plan? To try to enter through the gray gate? Oh, look at you. You can draw on it. Fantastic. We don't need gates. No, Thanks. we don't need we don't need the gate. <laughs> but we will need the bridge unless you can swim. But the gable gate is closer to the palace. Yes, it is, but it's also going to be more highly guarded because it's near there. 
blasphemous cathedral. Well, it's their just gods, of course, are weak. But... All hail Harry George. <laughs> I, I feel like that Not deserves a backhand the of some sort. <laughs> it deserves what? A backhand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who invited the hedgehog the anyway? or the goblin? Uh, whoever is hailing Harry George. Just kidding. Backhand. It's not the cleric. <laughs> cleric. He's the one waving the fish in my picture. <laughs> of course he is. He's a cleric because he what fills out paperwork. Okay, anyway, that was a really bad joke. Well, Ow. he makes <laughs> he leaves markings on paper. <laughs> Who knows what they what residue that is? Oh my! Well, well, right, so it looks like you, we have a discussion option. between. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's. I was just going to say that basically. I accept the backhand and get backhanded. <laughs> <laughs> Obligatory. <laughs> As he falls off the table. Or... or something. Your crack squad has a decision to make. Shall you follow the words of the, the great and wonderful paladin, head to Greygate? Or will Ox lead you to Gablegate? More smashing to do at the Gablegate. Bang hats, dynamite. Good. Waves of dynamite, dynamite, dynamite dangerously close to a candle. <laughs> <laughs> Profanius moves the candle. Far, <laughs> far away. Um, oh, well, let's just go somewhere. I want to smash something. I assume the heavier, the heavier lines on this map are bigger roads. Okay. That's how I'm reading it. Um, I know. I know the the actual setting leaves it quite a bit up to interpretation. Uh, like, <clears throat> so how are you holding the map? Is it down on a table, by the way? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a scary question. That is a scary question. Um, yeah, he's he's totally probably holding it. Okay. Nothing. Because now, now he's got the. You know, the candle in the one hand that he's moving way over here. I think, um, just, just based I would imagine that Profanius is pretty uh, knowledgeable. I think the, the dark lines, such as here, that's actually a river. Oh, no, no, no not that. Thing. I was talking about, so if you look at the line going into Gable Gate, it's a lot heavier than the line going into Grey Gate. Yes, yes. I think the Gable Gate, especially Footfall District, is uh, is heavily traded. So that's a heavy trader's road, whereas Grey Gate is more of a, a pathway out of a few villages. This is a farming area, so yes. I hear what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about, if you, even if no one else does. Which, you know, I have the blessing of Bogal Krok, so I'm correct, regardless of what you think. Yes. Um, I suppose. I mean, if if we do, if we do go into Gablegate, that does give us the chance to completely violate their cathedral and perhaps topple it, and therefore prove the supremacy of Erect a statue to Harry George. Backhand. <laughs> Back off the table. <laughs> Our goblins will be all dead. You just, you just climbed up <laughs> to get the back out. <laughs> Are you looking to kill him, or is that just a, no, just a, no, a simple just... backhand? Well, that's that's okay. a dawdle. Easily done, and, uh, yeah. and he survives it. Your, your left eye twitches a little bit now. <laughs> you play that character, you need to twitch your left eye. Sorry. Marked. Twitching. All right. So the plan then is to, uh, is to head to the southern gate there, and uh, you may make a stopover at the cathedral. That uh, sounds brilliant to me. I'm pretty excited about this plan. All right, uh, so let's. Da, da, da. Mm, okay. Uh, now, just as an advice here for me as a GM, uh, I am a china shop architect, and I have a load of bulls to entertain. 
so I've been instructed to break the city in interesting ways, just so you guys are aware. That is how things will work. That seems like a lot of pressure. I don't know if I can pull it off. So now we will. How are you guys traveling? I'm riding by dog. Well, we are. By one dog or several dogs? One dog. They just have one dog. Excellent. Oh, it's the one. I tried riding on Harry George, and it it hurts. I mean, (laughs) tried riding a hedgehog. (laughs) Not a good idea. (laughs) But you still do it. The fifth time we stopped. How many goblins did that take? Took the death of two goblins. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, so we have the dog riding goblins and uh, Profanius. Do you have a steed? I do not. I uh, walk. Ox, I don't think anything can carry you. Hmm. I walk to be closer. I'm, I'm just walking. Bog out Karak pulled us. Oh, that's that's almost beautiful. Almost. Almost. Excellent. So, uh, eight of you uh, walk down uh, over the course of a, a few hours. Uh, what time of uh, what time of day or evening is it when you arrive, Profanius, at the uh, the forest? Uh, go through the forest and head to the farms in the outskirts of Freiburg. It's actually um, kind of that that magical time when when dusk is just becoming night. Because we're orcs and we just don't get up very early. Makes perfect sense to me. Uh, so it's a magical, beautiful time. It's almost night. And uh, it's, it's it's a farm, so it's, it's picturesque here. There are the long rows of various corns and wheats here. And the many people who are gathering together after a long day's work uh, in order to have their their supper together as large families and gatherings. And the eight of you walk into town. Uh, Now, of course, with the orcs pushing back against the humans and the others of uh, this fantasy world, these guys aren't complete pushovers. There are a couple of uh, stout farmers who will probably see you. Now, what we have is a cluster of, uh, of homes that are within the village itself, and of course, you probably can walk right straight past any of the, the homestead farms that are out on the, uh, the outskirts. Uh, but as you come eventually closer towards the gate, you're going to, if you want to continue on the road, you'll need to walk pretty much through the town. Uh, village, sorry. Which is about 20 different buildings. Uh, all of them uh, one story, and most of them just uh, small. Uh, walk straight through, or to walk around. What's the plan here? Walk straight I through. I'm a little bit hungry. We could go fetch some food. Humans always have food. Indeed. In fact, there's a small tavern here. So, very. Alex, small. you're muted. Toppy <laughs> suggests drinks. We go, dr- we go drink. Nice. Ooh, awesome. Okay. We're not drinking that weak human swell. Drink enough of it. It uh, averages out. Uh, and the I believe you... the goblins would start to form a small tower of their oversized coat, top hat, <laughs> and glasses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What about the hedgehog? The hedgehog, the, the hedgehog in the coat, or does he get left behind? The hedgehog is the face. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which wasn't part of the plan until you asked. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And you're, of course, dragging the dog on a string behind you. Oh, yeah. The dog, yeah. The dog follows. You do not put him on a post on the outside like in the yeah. Western. So you just bring him straight into I... the is so that I guess now. Go without your dog. <laughs> Three of you enter the tavern, uh, which is similar to like a saloon, because it's the first image that comes to my mind. Uh, and there are some farmers here, as well as uh, one of the town guard. 
This is a pretty peaceful area. Uh, so they they all look around, and um, there the three of you are. But what's the plan here, Ox? Because I think any other plan would be obviated by whatever Ox does. <laughs> I will just walk straight there, and I I'm gonna take some food and drink now. <laughs> nice. Uh, there's there's some food on uh, one table. There's a small family of uh, blonde-haired, uh, blue-eyed uh, children and a mother, and they seem to be eating the bounty of the day. Just that that's the closest food that happens uh, when you walk in. I will go there and just take the food and so growl at the children. <laughs> Children duck under the table, and uh, the one town guard, you can tell he's a town guard because he has a spear that he set up uh, on the bar there. Uh, he takes his spear, and he looks over, and uh, then he starts moving towards the back. You notice this, <laughs> Professor. <clears throat> For some reason, goblins, no one seems quite as scared of you. In fact, uh, the bartender seems to recognize you. <laughs> um, the um, Toppy, who's speaking above the hedgehog face, <laughs> like just out of the little hole, out of the kind of undone top of the top hat, is, uh, apologize, apologies for my deformed, ugly mother. <laughs> she hungry. Drinks now. Ah, liquid dinner. Very well. Uh, he, he starts pouring from a tap and uh, slaps a nice stout tankard. Profanius, what are you doing? Um, Profanius, Profanius kind of stopped in the doorway and he's kind of surveying the scene um, before he grunts in approval, seeing you know none of their weak priests or signs of their weak god. Um, and then he will, I think, lift a, a toast from the table that Ox scared away to Bog al -Karak. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Profanius. I did not realize that you were looking for profane uh, sacraments or... or the, there's actually a small wooden sculpture behind the bar of, uh, of the goddess of the harvest. Uh, it's a human thing. So, uh, just so you know, the bartender is... That's, that's got important to know. That's very important to note. So Profanius will uh, stride over. What is that? Uh, that's, that's Demeter. Uh, she's the goddess of the harvest. She helps with the bounty for the entire village. Sacrilege. Four voices. Pipe up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're trained so well. <laughs> uh, a strong god does not need to provide bounty. A strong god takes what he wants. Amen to that. And I will follow the whole plate. <laughs> the plate and all? That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the mother and children, they're all hiding under the table. The, the father is... He's, he's, a, he's a farmer, so he's not weak, but boy, you are huge, and it's just food. They have lots at home, so he's not entirely sure if he wants to take that fork after you because you're armored, and your armor looks stronger than his fork. So he has not exactly reacted to you. However, Ox, <clears throat> during this uh, philosophical debate, or, or more, I guess more of a theological debate, uh, that's taking place between uh, goblins and... Uh, <clears throat> Perfenius. You see that there are a couple of town guards uh, that are coming up towards the front door. One of them looks very familiar, if you can tell humans apart. Just so you know. Uh, the bartender's like, hey, I just serve, and uh, she's done well by us. Uh, she doesn't ask for a whole lot, and the bounty has been very good lately. So. Um. One of... One of the gloves of this of the very convincing human crawls off little feet that coming out from beneath it and runs off, grabs the alcohol and disappears into the coat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, so the bartender does not know how to react to that. 
and more people are moving towards the back of uh, the bar because it seems like that a large tavern fight may be taking place here. You hear from outside, uh, Oh there, orcs! Get out of our place! Before I do anything else, I'm going to ask the farmer about the fork. Are you going to eat that? The, 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 the fork? The food! I'm just going to grab the fork and swallow that too. Thank you. And then I take my sword out. Okay. The goblins are like, phew. <laughs> like, we know we know orcs. <laughs> and in a very awkward puppet, like very badly puppeted way, they kind of lean up against the bar. Like they don't have anything to worry about. And a little bit of beer kind of spills on the floor underneath the coat. <laughs> like it randomly came from nowhere. That's awesome. Profanius, uh, you're being challenged from outside. Uh, it looks like now more town guards have come. There are five of them out there. I'm, I'm less worried about the guards right now. Um, I, I want to lean over the bar and snag that holy symbol and throw it into the fire. <laughs> oh, whoa, that's <laughs> awesome. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, um... This bartender is not gonna fight you over that, but that's that's definitely that's pretty upset. That's upsetting. <laughs> Sergeant Pinewood is is in the outside there, and uh, he and, with his guard and their cheap bows and axes, uh, they're they're pretty. What? Did you see what? He... Oh! All right, go ahead and fire on them. You start seeing arrows. <laughs> Start firing through the front door. These guys are cowardly staying outside and firing arrows inside towards you. A goblin, you're unfortunately in the line of fire for this. <laughs> Even though you're not an orc. Just so you know. I'm not an gets behind the bar. The goblins. The, the farmer jumps behind... Uh, the farmer ducks behind the table with his uh, wife and children. And the rest of the bar is empty. And uh, it appears there are five town guards who are objecting village guards who are objecting to your uh, treatment of their uh, little deity. How big is the door to the tavern? You the had to duck down and turn to get in. So it's not that big because I was thinking about just grabbing a table and use that as a shield. You certainly could. You could cover almost the entire door with a table if you wanted. There is a window to the left though. I was going to go out with the table. Oh. Smash people! I... I think that you could try to do that if you want. Yes, I want to. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, let's let's go ahead and go for that. That sounds fun to me. So I Oxa... want the table where the family is hidden under. <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> I know. All right, so you're gonna grab up their table, and they're all like, cowering ah! and starting to crawl away. One little girl is crying and hold, clutching onto her dolly, uh, and the little boy has a slingshot that he's going to not shoot you with. I'm just going to tell them that Ox need table. <laughs> take it. Ox need table. Cool. So let's uh, let's see. You, I assume you're going to use that table to, to what? Guard yourself, to smash through and go after a couple of the guards. I'm trying to see what's the... I want to shield to shield myself first, and when I'm close enough, to just you know throw it at them, and see. Nice, nice. All right, so I understand where you're headed, and uh, let's see some dice on that one. So, I get to roll dice against you now, and I'm going to be using my suspicion dice, which I'm keeping track cleverly with uh, the skills of uh, dice stream. So I have two dice there, uh, and then I have dice for the guards who are the force watches one I'm using. Uh, so they'll be using their cheap bows as equipment. So I'm rolling three dice. So I always get one, right? Yes. And then one for hitting stuff and yes. being tough. Another mm -hmm. one. And one, uh, two, for, to prove just hitting things is a viable alternative to complicated battle plans. OK. I have failed. Yay, I have two successes. Beautiful. Uh, so, oh, how do narration rights flow on this one? I feel stupid for not knowing that right off the top of my head. Uh, okay. 
for Getting Phineas. Things done. Yes. Who has a narr- narrative <laughs> right <laughs> on this? Oh, oh, um, the 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 havoc master, the havoc master. Oh, okay. So there's no point if the players succeed, the GM still. I was just double checking. It, it's your job to make their demise as entertaining as possible. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, good. Um, so you come smashing through with the table. A couple of the edges snap off and become nice and splintery. Uh, there are five arrows that come thunking into the front of the table. You barrel over the porch area past the uh, uh, where the you know the trough. Because again, I'm going with a saloon idea because it amuses me. And uh, you, you push two of the guards straight into the watery trough as they, they try to duck out of the way of the table that you've thrown at them. And uh, there are just three guards left now, including the uh, the captain. Captain being an honorary term that he gave himself of, uh, of the, the village guard here. And they can I ask about you. scavenging? Is that a role, or is that just I can scavenge one thing per scene? You can scavenge once per seen, so here in the village you can scavenge. I uh, think scavenge. the De Havoc Master rolls, don't you? Does don't I? you roll a d6? I will, that is probably true. Let me, uh... Because I know what I want to steal. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly how I want to steal it as well. <laughs> After a fight, when they feel find a particularly useful stash of supplies, or GM rolls a die, how many useful pieces of equipment the characters can scavenge? We determine the sort of equipment the characters can take, then go ahead. Otherwise, ask the players what they want to find and work something out together. Thank you. So I will roll dice, uh, and that's how many pieces, so it's just straight d6. Um, that is after a fight, though, and unfortunately... Or when they still... find a particular useful stash. That's true. If you want to declare a stash here, then you can. Uh, this means the rest Kids have stuff. Oh, you want... To... I guess gonna let the goblins steal from the kids so that you can you don't get anything else from this wonderful village with this bevy of uh, corn cornmeal a slingshot on a doll <laughs> what's better than that all right I'm rolling scavenging I, yeah go for it uh, I just rolled two dice for no apparent reason so there are three things take. Well, the goblins would like to, in a flash of movement, suddenly the ch- little girl's doll is not there and there's a goblin in its place for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Smiling. I hope the it's just in your one. Just the one. Just smiling back at the girl. <laughs> Aww, that's kind until, of adorable. Until anyone freaks out and then runs off. Cool. Uh, good. So you've taken those two things. There's one thing that the other two of you can take if you want to. Oh, I've just taken the doll. You took the doll, right? You took the doll I and the slingshot. The doll, that's it. No, oh, just the just doll. the doll. Not the slingshot. Nope. You are stupid. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so you got three guards here, and I think there's a morale thing. So let me check real quick. Uh, how morale works. I'm sorry. I knew it earlier, and now my brains have lost the memory of how morale works. So let me look it up quickly. Equal to his morale, my spokes, couple. Okay. Taking squad's morale and the authority of the leader. Morale points are removed. So, okay, so instead of wounds, I have morale points. Is that how it goes? Is that how you yep. recall it? Andrea? Yep. So, I mean, you could be we could be facing down an entire army, but if you only find them, you know, five morale points, the whole army just runs away or something. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to say that the successful attack of the table was two morale points then, and uh, they're not quite ready to run away and pee themselves. Sergeant Pinewood, who's captain of the guard, I don't know, some kind of crazy human rank military thing, is, uh, is going to go ahead and, and attack again. So I'm I'm coming after you guys. I'm after blood, you crazy ox, and Profanius. Does he have a nice weapon? Uh, he has a an axe and cheap bow. 
does the axe look like proper axe or a tiny little human axe? It's a tiny little human axe. So I don't want it. No. You probably Pretty sure even a great axe could be used as like a toothpick for you. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> and that stupid human is still coming after me. I like it. <laughs> All right, so these guys are going to be firing upon uh, the ox, I think, first. Yeah, because you're, like, the most obvious thing and you're gigantic. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll. Are you attacking back, I assume? Yes, definitely. All right, so I'm doing my three dice. What are you rolling, uh, ox, and what's, what's the plan here? I'm just going to go hit stuff again. So cool. it's the same five dice. What's great is that even though they're at range to fire a bow at you... You are so large with your great sword that you can still reach out and hit them. <laughs> that is so awesome. I am good. No. Being shot. No. Oh my gosh. Oh come on, five dice and not one four. Nice. Uh, okay, so you are able to whack one of them uh, over the head. He was not wearing any armor, so he stumbles a bit and then falls. Uh, the other two, though, get some... They just find the nicks. It's like one of them, he's talking, he's got a black-fledged arrow, and it was the arrow of his father and his father's father, and he prays to some unknown deity, and then let's fly and have to go right into your booty, like the one part there, and he gets you for one wound. Anyone who knows that quote, you know, that a bastardized quote, thank you uh, for entertaining me there. If you get one wound level, suck it, ox. Oh, stupid human. Profanis, you just saw it's actually still sticking out of Ox. You see that the Ox is going down. Ox is obviously doomed because there are two pitiful villager guards who are fighting with Ox <laughs> out of five. So Ox is, she's in trouble. Bog Alcarok is disappointed in Ox. Oh, come on. <laughs> It's all because she didn't um, get some parnish before I started to fight. That's the reason. If your strength, if your faith was strong enough, your parsit deficiency has, been, has worked against you, unfortunately. What are you Terrible. doing, goblins? You've stolen, you scavenged last round. We're in um, the round. You doing oh, something? I'm now. I wish I'd taken the catapult, the little slingshot, because I have an idea. But I need a slingshot for it. Well, all you took was a doll, so if you yeah, want to steal somebody else's items. scavenge, get two more items. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. I, I'm steal I, I, They're the goblins. They don't care about stealing other people's <laughs> portion of the loot. Um, they, uh, one of them runs back and like taps the little boy and then like, yoink! <laughs> and <laughs> runs off into to join the rest of his gang who have wobbling in a tower towards the door. All right. Or what's left of the door after Ox went through. I love how, how this is a team, but only one of you is fighting. That's so smart. All right. Brilliant. Did he think Profanius? Yeah, Profanius will uh, have to go help. Yay. Show these weak humans what true strength is. Okay, then Bog, I'll crack. You That's go hard. first. Uh, if you succeed at this roll, the chances are very good that their morale will be broken here. Oh, good, good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit stuff for Bog Al Karak using the ancient sword of Bog Al Karak. Nice. Not holding your turnip of Bog, Bog Al Karak above you. <laughs> I wear that around my neck. Ah. Uh. Hey, look at that. Wow. Tweet. Uh, so you you run charging in. You take a shot to your pilgrim hat, which is awesome in the... in the. I think I've got a picture of the awesomeness that is... No, no, where is it? I didn't actually print out the character sheets because that was y'all's deal. Well, we can... Uh, Share screen. Yeah, or something. screen share is an awesome picture that is Profanius in his arrow through his hat. Um, you take one wound. Uh, that might present you. No. Go that sucker up so we can see. 
I'm bad at planning. Apologies. There no he is. Worries. Awesome. See those arrows? Now I've brought it to life. <laughs> it looks exactly <clears throat> like Profanius, whose name I keep forgetting. But I can remember Bog Al Karak. That's more important, <laughs> honestly. It is more like, important. That it's is. Kind of like wooden armor, which I think is really kind of awesome. I'll stop presenting you. Ooh. Cool. Um, so you you take one wound level and uh, and then you drive off the rest of them because their morale has been defeated. And uh, the, the village is yours for a while. <clears throat> In that that momentary pause as they're running off, the goblins have got the slingshot and Harry George set up in it, <laughs> ready to fire, and then they kind of like, oh. They, open, would... they dismantle their siege weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, love the goblins. Good. Is is the uh, barkeep still behind the bar? Or did he run away too? Yeah, well, he had nowhere else to run, so yeah, okay. he's still behind the bar. So Profanius will go back in and... You know, where is your god now? Burning in the fireplace? Exactly. Bog al Karak is clearly superior. Okay. I agree. Excellent. Then we will toast to Bog al Karak. Really? Toast? You know, the, the city guard will probably be coming out soon. Just so you know. He's pouring it in. A little goblin comes right up to his face. <clears throat> Toast. <laughs> Thank you, goblin. He pours a couple of ales, uh, nice stout dwarven ales, and uh, puts Ooh. one up there, and he takes the other for himself, and puts up the cup. Uh, the goblins all fight to climb in back up. So, uh, Traveler, why are you here? Well, now they... that we... Okay. My Good dang. luck with that. Ox, have you eaten your fill? Yes. Oak's ready to go. Smash things. Yay! We shall carry on. Very well. I'm have one of the goblins under my arm and start walking with that goblin, whoever it happened to be. Uh, you're walking. Who are you walking with? Uh, <laughs> Stinky Pete. <laughs> oh no! You have to give me that one. <laughs> Okay, compared to your order, it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta remember, I don't think Ox, Ox bathes, because I don't know if she can remove the armor. Is it welded on? <laughs> Bolted. Hey, um, by the way, did you remove that arrow? Have you tempted to... You can oh, yes, I... Yourself. Yeah, I completely just ripped it out. Okay. Actually, um, Ox, if you want, you could have grabbed Bangs. His trousers are full of dynamite, so it's your choice. <laughs> Stinky yeah, let's go with bangs. that. Nice. Let's go with that. Dynamite. Okay, you, you've got basically a living grenade. Perfect. Now oh, I need a candle. <laughs> okay, this so one person when, you, you when can... Uh, he you... says candle. Yeah, candle, candles are coming. Don't worry. Oh, goodness, I can't wait. I totally have ideas. All right. Uh, <laughs> healing or moving on? And how do you heal? Now, I actually have blessing here. over the wounds with my parsnip. Oh, that's awesome. That's all you need. You're good. Once per scene, you may heal um, according to the wounds section. So I guess we're good to go then. All right. Before you is the gate, the wondrous gray gate. Wow. Um, the walls of Freiburg are quite large. They are 30 feet high, and they are made of uh, 
blocks of lodestone that have been laid together with excellent care. And uh, it is quite a stout wall that has withstood many centuries of attacks. And then there's the gate. Just manned by humans who are trained to not let orcs inside. What do you do? Does anybody have fire? I need fire. Boom. You have fire? Boom. <gasps> Stupid goblins. <laughs> Profanius, do you have fire? I do not have fire. We need fire. I, I think the goblin is trying to tell us it Boom. has fire. Okay, so oh, we show have me no the fire. fire. Just saying boom. We have boomsticks. Boomsticks, yes, we have the boomsticks, and I want to set the boomsticks and, you know, make things blow Please. up. Yes, just put them in your whatever, pants or something, and then we light them, and then I toss you towards the gate. Bees don't explode. Good plan. <laughs> Bees don't explode. Oh god. <laughs> oh. Wand. Yeah, wand. I want fire. Fire. Maybe fire wand. Oh do come on. Think... Goblins do the goblins in fact know what that wand does? No idea. Excellent. Even better. Um, I don't think they know that there's only one charge left either. They just Mugged a wizard. Nice. <laughs> wizard mugging. I'm going, to, I'm going to do a flashback to that scene if that amuses me. <laughs> uh, so, just so I understand the plan, as it was, Ox is going to throw uh, the dynamite wielding goblin at the gate yes. in an attempt to knock. And <laughs> Yeah, sort of. Just knock it down. I don't sounds, knock. That sounds awesome to me. Any you know, Profanius, any thoughts? No. Just pray no. for success there. Anybody want to give some... Like, mm, anybody no. tell they're her good. what to do so we're good? good? I'm just saying there are other mechanics to give her some more dice. Uh, that is a, it's, a, it's a dead good plan, I think. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty awesome. Cool. Let's take a quick bio break, and then we will see how uh, Grey Gate stands upon the goblin explosion attack. Aren't, aren't we going into Gable? Do what? Gable instead of Grey. Oh, so we can blow yes, up the cathedral. I totally messed that up. I said Grey Gate, didn't I? But we're going into Gable. Okay. Thank you very much. As long as we know where we're going, one or we're the other going. of us. You guys know, but obviously I didn't. You're going into Gable Gate, uh, which is at the south. And uh, so thank you. So we're going to Gable Gate. We'll see that in five minutes. Okay.
What what is happening? Hmm? I was just doing a little do 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 do. A little goblin dance. Mm. There is a constant little goblin dance. Excellent. They have a lot of nervous energy. <laughs> the goblins. <laughs> I think they have a lot of energy. Period. Yeah. Nervous or otherwise. Are there any uh, specific tenants of a uh, Bog Alcarok? <laughs> Can't remember. Bog Alcarok. Like commandments or? No. You um, make them up. <laughs> I make them up. Uh, essentially, <laughs> essentially want... all, all it says is the um, Bog Alcarok pulled the orcs from the ground like parsnips. Mm. And essentially, if you can't take what you want, you are weak. Mm. You should be crushed. Another question. Did the worship of Bog al Karuk begin with Profanius? <laughs> or is this a religion that's been going on for a while? Or did you just come up with it one day <laughs> and demand everyone not. to worship him? <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do such a thing? <laughs> Good point. Honest to Pete. Honest to Stinky Pete. <laughs> nice. Very cool. I feel like I've been spied upon. Not approve. <laughs> so, I have to tell you guys real quick. Well, oh, she just came back. Never mind. Oh, well, if it's quick, we can say something bad yeah. about you. <laughs> no, no. I didn't want to <laughs> take Of course you were. <laughs> I was just, I was going to say, so my roommate bought some coffee cakes from some lady at work. And they're like, you know, they're like this big. Like, they are big coffee cakes. He has eaten both of them. They're raspberry and cream cheese. He brought them home Friday at, like, 7.30, and he has eaten both of them. Wow. Yeah. He really must have liked them. Apparently. I'm a little <laughs> horrified. A little bit. I was like, like, oh. Maybe I will grab a piece of coffee cake for a snack, and they're already both gone, and I did not Aww. get a single piece. I made some I hope fruit so. dip, and it's it's going very quickly as well. I had to abstain from having any of it during after my pizza for lunch. I really wanted it though. Such great fruit dip. It's made of things that you folks in Europe don't know what it is. So, Ooh. mystery <laughs> ingredients. It's interesting. Cool Whip. Now I'm curious. Oh, well, cool Whip. Jules, Jules doesn't know what Cool Whip is. Is that whipped cream? Yes. Okay. And, and um, also uh, Marshmallow Cream, which Jules says she didn't know what that was. We don't have that. That sounds so American. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Do you know what marshmallows are, right? I, guess uh -huh. I know what marshmallows yeah. are. But... So just imagine someone so... whipping that up into a cream instead of it being a little marshmallowy thing, just taking that substance and making it into a type of... Sticky cream. So it's Martian. So so you know, Andrea, 
Oh god, yes. It's 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 a tub of Cool Whip, like this small, not the Giganto, but the the regular size cut tub of Cool Whip. I usually do the fat free or light, uh, and then a stick of Philadelphia cream cheese. I usually do the Nuftel because it's you know lower fat too, and then um, one thing of Jet Puff marshmallow cream. Mix all of that into a bowl. Uh, my wife puts some vanilla, uh, usually a little bit of pumpkin spice, and sometimes she puts just a add of cinnamon, and then you uh, do the thing that makes all the noise. Blender, you do, do like hand blend it until it's a nice gooey consistency. You usually leave the cream cheese out so that it's mushy. Otherwise, you know, you're going to have to really, really blend it. Then you, I would, you can eat it right away. But I would recommend putting it in the fridge and let it congeal. <clears throat> let it congeal, and uh, it's extremely tasty with apples, and also not too bad with bananas. And it is very low fat. Like six tablespoons is about you know like 80 calories, so it's kind of amazing that way. Sounds delicious. It is. Oh my delicious God, we're talking much. about food again, you guys. I <laughs> <laughs> just wrote in the chat to the type international oh, the recipe food. corner. Also recipe corner. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been Cooking with Rich. This is, the thing, I, us. this is the only thing where I prepare ingredients into a finished product. Everything else is take a thing out of the fridge or freezer, put it into a device that warms it, serve it to son and wife sometimes, and me. So that's the <laughs> one thing. And that was taught to me by wife and is extremely simple. That's why I'm able to successfully make it. Thank you. Bravo, sir. Thank you. So Gable Gate, because Grey Gate is untouched. Uh, even though I, uh, for some reason, was thinking of the farms up to the north, it was actually a uh, farm to the south. In fact, you can see in the map there are lines of farms, so I was more right than I thought. All right, so you guys are headed up to Gable Gate, and uh, there's a discussion of some blowing it up, which yes. I think is a good plan. I said that was a good one. Ooh, beautiful. Now, Gooden Good. gives a re-roll. Yes? Yeah, Good you want cunning a... plan. Yeah, so cunning plan is where you tell someone uh, your advice. We could say that the cunning plan is Ox telling the goblin, I'm going to kill you with this dynamite, and the, di and the goblin trying to aim himself. We could do that. Good little I'm, goblin. But then the goblin Goblins has Goblins are down with that. <laughs> Goblins are awesome. <laughs> yes, they, they are. Have no sense of self-preservation. That's the best part. Yes. Go in the name of Bog al Karuk. Parsnip. Beautiful. I think this is going to go very well. Uh, so, if you want those... Uh, oh, hmm, you can't give... You know, is Ox giving advice... We're telling the goblin what to do, and the goblin is doing it, and therefore making the roll. Or is Ox just making the roll, and the goblin's not finding it? Who rolls dice is what I'm asking. I think the goblins, because Alex hasn't been rolling the dice yet. I think so, too. So goblins, you get to roll yourself to immolation. And explosion. <laughs> okay, Go, goblin! Uh, so I get... Um... Creating a distraction? Throw that in. I um, think so. Um, what else? Well, a suspicious quantity of dynamite. <laughs> um, are you using my? Sl are we using my slingshot? Mm -hmm. It's you're the one rolling the dice. You get to dictate. Oh, am, I, am I being thrown? Yeah. I think I'm being thrown. No, I you're think being thrown. Oh, okay. But what if I would be using the slingshot? Would that give him one extra die? If he wants to use up his slingshot for this, that sounds fantastic. Go for okay, it. Okay, yeah. slingshot. Pulled back an extremely <laughs> taut amount, I imagine. <laughs> and um, the um, cunning plan gives me the ability to re-roll, not extra dice. No, it gives you two d6. Yes. Okay, so okay, I'm ready to roll. You could you can oh, throw a drive in there too if you want. That's oh, true. Yeah, I forgot. 
And the tribe gives you. Well, two I don't dice, think I can right? use mm -hmm. to not die. <laughs> <laughs> I can add to help the orcs achieve their mission. Now, Dave. just to peel back the curtain of the mechanics for the GM, when you do something like blow up the gate, that adds to a thing called suspicion, which gives me free dice to use against you in challenges because people know you're coming. However, you have the ability to do a thing. Um, called Mayhem, which you takes the number of dice I have in Suspicion and gives you bonus dice to do uh, something crazy and awful. This is probably going to raise Suspicion, the explosion of Gable Gate. Yeah. Um, adding a drive, um, I guess I used one mark of the drive, and that gives me one dice. Yes. Drive gives you one or two. And... I've got two marks, so I don't know. Do you have to mark it as used? Drives at two used. dice, so long as you're working towards satisfying them. Yeah, but you don't have to mark, mark them as used. used. You, you do? You do mark it as used if there's a little box behind it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I've, and that adds two dice for one notch, one little mark. Yes. Okay, so eight dice. <laughs> Away. <laughs> All right, I'm going to roll four against you. Ooh, good lord. Wow. Um, you, I have two successes. You have... Two successes. Wow, that's abysmal. Do you want to... Okay. But that, that was dead good. Ah, <laughs> very good. What does dead good mean? It means you get a reroll, yes? Yep. Okay. All right, Play so I'll dead good profanious, dice. and thank you for your assistance. <laughs> it's all for the person. That's a lot more successes. Hey. <laughs> Beautiful. So, uh, <clears throat> if we we cut to a to a couple of guards up on what was the thing? The thing, the little walkway where you parapet? No. Is it parapet? Is that a thing? Can we just say what? wall? Wait, on the wall makes me think they're stepping on top of the actual wall. They're actually on a little like walkway. Like a runway, perhaps, and they're dressed nicely, and talking about things. Anyway, a pair of guards uh, looking over the wall, and and one says to the other, "Hey, what's that?" We. <laughs> and then, see, in the darkness, a goblin has a nice kind of baseball arc, and his little streamer of the in the dynamite, and then. Boom, 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 there's there, there are blocks and the lodestone is broken and cracked up and the gate is wide open and there's screams of people freaking out and running away and patting themselves out and jumping into wells because they are slightly on fire and uh, chaos. So yeah, the suspicion goes up a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, but uh, your way is clear. Uh, five goblins, Profanius and Ox. I assume you run, go rushing in. Um, yeah. Yes. There's a cheer from the goblins, and they all charge. <laughs> hey. No, oh, you run into Footfall District, which the, is the part of Freiburg where there are a great deal of. Um, I don't even know what Footfall District should, should mean. Like, what does that mean? Footfall. People, people walk. Why would something be called Footfall District? Uh, yeah, I'm guessing. But it's near the cathedral, so I'm thinking that the footfall district is where many devout followers of uh, those who like to go to the Cathedral of Solace uh, attend. This is a very churchy crowd, and they're not at all pleased with what has taken place. And there are many lights that are coming on in, uh, in windows, and uh, you hear that there are calls for guards, and uh, we're under attack, we're under attack, we're under attack, but no immediate resistance as uh, you first enter the gates. You have moments before uh, there will be teeming, the streets will be teeming with some guards as they attempt to push you back. Is there anything you do in preparation uh, for the attack from the constables? Are we completely out of dynamite now? I, yeah, I, I think so. we blew up our dynamite supply. Oh. And our, and our dynamite expert as well. 
So good thing, because what would you have done with the dynamite? Nothing. Exactly. Exactly. Well, blow off the church for one thing. It's fine. It's it's a weak structure. We got bees. We've got bees. They're not okay. explosive. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The bees have been blessed by Bog Alkirok. Good plan. Hmm. They are mighty, and they shall carry the strength of his power. Okay, so things that we are doing. Um, well, I suggest we head in the general direction of the cathedral slash great palace at a charge. Well, you had your fill at the tavern at the village, so I'm sure that Ironsides doesn't hold any appeal. Uh, Footfall District being near the cathedral, uh, there are a lot of, uh, of stone houses here uh, with thatched roofs. And some of them have gable, because uh, it is gable gate. Sorry. Uh, so you guys can run down the city streets, but of course there are going to be guards, so I assume you're running together. Let's say that you head down Narrow Alley, uh, and that's where Captain Stoke, an incredibly tired woman, and uh, <clears throat> her, uh, her <laughs> overworked poor constables... Uh, come up now. They are dressed a little bit more stoutly than the uh, the village guard, who were pretty much just walking around in best padded armor. These guys actually have um, they have leather, like hardened boiled leather uh, vests and coats. And uh, Captain Stoke herself has a very very nice um, very nice sword, while the rest of them have clubs and well worn crossbows. Uh, there are eight of them. Uh, who are coming uh, from up the other side of the alley, and then a couple are going to kind of form up behind you as well as uh, gets to alert the entire constabulary. With have them. they definitely seen us? You have... They have not seen you, goblins. They can't help but see the ox. <laughs> <laughs> they try and to pretend they didn't wait. see the ox. And Brofenius is right there, so... Uh, I guess the goblins start crawling up the walls, like along the gutters towards the guards. So they're kind of just above them. Oh, nice. So you're trying to get some advantage. Very good. All right. Uh, you can do that. I'm not even going to put a roll on that. You can climb up the walls. Uh, it's a quick... So I, the way I'm seeing this is, is a kind of a, a narrowish alley, but there are a couple of forks off. So if you wanted to split off in different areas and try to... S break them up, you're welcome to do that. Ox, if you just want to charge straight ahead towards the six that are, are coming down the alley towards you, you're welcome to. If you guys want to double back and try to run a different way and get deeper into the city, you're welcome to do that too. What do you wish to do? I think I just want to run into them and kind of like kind of, kind of like bowling. Just, you know. Oh, that's, that's fall, yes, fall them all down. Oh, that's a good plan. Alright, uh, so you're going to bowl over some constables. I think they all have those hats, right? <laughs> the, the, the kind of domish hats there. They have to. Called? Alex, come on. This is a British thing, so I need to. What's that hat called? I don't know if it's the. I guess it's you're referring to the kind of the round heads. Yes, the the constable's round hat thing. Don't make me Google constable round hat thing. Oh, you actually <laughs> mean the. Uh, Oh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the tit. Seriously? <laughs> no, that's not that. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I mean, I can see a picture. I just don't know what it's called. Oh, I'm trying to think of what it is. It's... I can't believe I broke this down on this one. Sorry, guys. Uh, I know. I'm going to first <laughs> Yeah, in this setting, they're called tits. In 1863, the Metropolitan Police replaced the tailcoat with a tunic, still high-collared, and the top hat with the custodian helmet. Okay, I would not have guessed that. <laughs> Which is based on the pickle hob. Of course. <laughs> They've got pickle hobs. Here, here, uh, let pickle me... Hobs. Everybody know what a pickle hob is? I'll share a quick picture of it, because they're awesome. 
I will share the pickle hob picture. It will take seconds. It's totally worth your time. Here's a pickle hob. Do, do, do. Oh, the goblins totally need to have those. I know, oh, right? Awesome. I can't believe they don't have one now. Oh, pickle they hob. will. <laughs> and then they can charge things and, you know, pierce them with the hat. That is how you get information without wasting too much time. And it's totally worth it, because look at that. <laughs> We've learned things. I learned what a pickle hop is. I'm mispronouncing it. German people, please go ahead and leave pickle me hop. messages about how I should pronounce pickle hop. Uh, good. So that is, is fantastic with their pickle hobs and their their boiled leather armors. Uh, and the constables are going to be uh, going with... Um, they've got a base value of three, but I'm going to throw in a couple dice from my... I've got five dice coming against you here. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I've got one from hitting stuff and one for being duff, and I guess my suit of inch-thick plate mail would help, too. Yeah, it certainly doesn't hurt. Why well, he drives. Right. Um, well, I've used the other one twice because I didn't realize I only get to use it twice. So I only have left to fight a powerful enemy champion, and I don't count these guys as a powerful enemy champion. So uh, You could scream, right? That's right. Your Actually, yes, I could be screaming from the top of my lung. Lungs. And that would add another suspicious thing. Yes. All right, go for it. Those are some good dice. Yes. Uh, nice. You succeed. There we go. I got my two, it just was delayed. I think you got me, right? Mm -hmm. Three successes against two. Excellent. So, uh, you scream out, uh, and unfortunately it's not a blessing to Bardock Rock or even like a worshipful phrase. Sorry. She didn't read the manual. Uh, but, Ox, you, you barrel forward and bowl over the constables uh, and do significant amount of damage. These guys, while well, they've got a good deal more morale... Uh, than the uh, <clears throat> the forest watch, but that's definitely going to give them pause. Uh, you are up, goblins, up on the wall, uh, and you get a vantage point of them kind of splitting off into alleys and starting to uh, try to set up some some traps and hide behind and inside buildings to try to pick off uh, poor ox. But they're definitely not going to face her uh, mono e mono, um, and you trample a couple of them, uh, kind of mashing. Uh, and smash their ox, but uh, you clear the streets. Excellent. If I can, I want to snatch one of those hat thingies, the big pickle something. Whatever. All right, we'll see how much there is to get here in this uh, this particular area. There are three things to get, and that was one of them. You absolutely have one. It won't fit you though. Your no, I want to give it to the goblins. Oh, I because see. they would look adorable That's in so it. Nice. Yes. You can get as many of those as you want. We'll count as one item. So uh, you okay. you. I'm getting sure. one for all of those that are left five, right? Five, yeah. Nice. Um, did you say it was the goblins? The goblins are up? Yes, you're up on the walls and getting a, a vantage point of the city that the others don't have. Well, um, the older guards have kind of spread out now? Yes. Okay, uh Where's the largest grouping? Um, the largest grouping, they would probably be forming up um, in the area nearest to uh, the... If you can look at the map, uh, they're kind of forming up in that large space open before you start to reach the Cathedral of Salas. Oh, yeah. I see it. Um, they're kind of goblins. trying to set up a roadblock. Okay, the goblins would like, scramble over the roofs. Um, and we'll get to overlooking that roadblock, roadblock, and at the top of their lungs, yell bees, and throw bees. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, cool. That is a bees attack. <laughs> that is a bees attack. Yes. <laughs> I think that uh, they're not nearly as formidable against bees. So I'm going to clear dice, and. Uh, Let's see if you can disperse them, sir. Okay. Do I get when I count dice? Do I start with one dice and then I start adding? Just to be clear. That is a good question. 
I uh like one dice then if I use a skill I add one dice. That is how I've been doing it. Yes. If you're and now you're trying to do a thing, roll a D six. You add more dice if you do stuff to add. Okay, well I'm hiding. I'm creating a distraction and okay, I'm not technically swarming over blokes, but bees do swarm. Proxies are. (laughs) I think bees swarm. So I'm going with that. And bees. So I'm going with five. All right, uh, we have um, four dice coming in here. Uh, three roll. successes. Oh man! So bees. how are these bees being held? Did you have a hive, or do you have them? Had a hive, them? yeah. An entire hive. Entire hive. We probably got stung as we were throwing it, but. I mean... That's awesome. Which which goblin threw this? That would be Coates, because he's wearing a coat and can won't be stung to death, hopefully. <laughs> the coat protects him. He's like a beekeeper. Uh, yeah. That's brilliant. So we'll cut back to Profanius, who is not... Uh, I'm not sure what Profanius has been doing, but I know it's got to be awesome. Oh, um, pretty much just following after Ox. Nice. Uh, so, Ox, once you barreled through those con- constables and you stopped to pick up all the pickle hobs, um, one thing that you notice looking across the way, uh, there's a large open space where some of the guards were setting up a, a bit of a roadblock. They were throwing up, hastily throwing up uh, tables and barriers and the like and rolling barrels in front uh, and, and trying to just box you guys in. Uh, but you saw just past them, uh, there was an array of different merchant shops uh, that look very nice. Uh, one of them is uh, it's, it's like a confectionery, where they serve different candies. Uh, there's a small bakery, which has a display of cakes uh, behind a plate glass window. And then uh, just beside that is what looks like some kind of bridal boutique with very nice gowns and dresses, and uh, there's some pretty veils and the like. So that's that's beyond the, the open area and very close to the cathedral. It's where the fancy people come to to shop, just boutiques and the like, just so you're aware. Uh, and then the the uh, do you have the, you see everybody kind of forming up their uh, hastily erected barrier, uh, which unfortunately does not get finished because of bees. Um, <laughs> do you see a hive land on the captain's head? Uh, she was very tired and overworked. She is now very scared and uh, be covered as she runs screaming off into the night, her screams echoing off of the cobblestones, and uh, you see many uh, people closing the shutters to their windows now because that sounds horrendous, and there are many other bees, and there are guards running about. They're broken and scattered. Their morale is completely shattered, Uh, and you guys have a few moments to scavenge if you wish. Um, We should get some cake. Just saying. Cake. Guys. And there, are, are, there are no cake? locks on that window. You could just punch right through it and take <laughs> all the cake you want. Uh, I'll the, do that. The goblins will leap down one of the drains to, down to the ground level. And as they hit the ground level, there'll be a moment of resistance, and then a new goblin will be shot out <laughs> amongst... <laughs> The, the five that jumped and came down. Now we had an assignment here for this goblin. What is this goblin named? Uh, he is... He's, oh, nope, sorry. It, it, it was cat. my assignment for some oh. reason. I just rich, rich knows I'm bad with names. I know, so, that's why um, I can't wait. This goblin, because he's a city goblin, he's a proper goblin. Um, at least he thinks so. His name is uh, Thaddeus Orpheus Adelphus Demagus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You can't claim to be bad with names after that. <laughs> but you can just call him Toad. <laughs> toad? Toad. Yes, Toad. Can you say the whole name again? I'll type it. Thaddeus Adolphus. Adolphus Demogorgon? No, I, I'm just making it last. <laughs> just, I was asking you to say it again because it sounded so awesome. Thaddeus, Orpheus, Adolphus, Demagus. <laughs> <laughs> Toad. Aww. 
That's dead good. <laughs> he looks uh, confused for a, uh, <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> like bug eye. He has very bug eyes and he's like just staring around at the group. And then they all <laughs> cheer, and then he cheers. And <laughs> Oh gosh! I'm I'm glad the group, like, like mind has has yeah. kicked in for him. Yeah, it's like he looks a little bit different, but oh well, he's a goblin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Ox is gorging on cake. Uh, cake. Profanius, uh, w- what are you doing? Oh, I think we still have one item we can scavenge, correct? I think two, maybe. Well, we've got a cake and a hat. Oh yeah, cake yeah. and a hat. Yeah, cake and hats. Hats, yeah. a lot of hats. Hats for all the oh, goblins. Yeah. Hats for all the goblins, naturally. Yes. Except for Toad. Hmm. You're back to six. So. True. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know what to scavenge. I have not used one. There. Ooh. There's some pretty veils, aren't there? Veils and garlands and other human things. That's a good idea. So yes, okay. we'll... Bride yeah. of Bog Al. <laughs> <laughs> Except I think Profanius is not feminine. There's, it's not really masculine either, because there really isn't for orcs, because they're grown, but that's totally cool. Um, yeah, I think we'll go scavenge in the, uh, the bridal veil shop. Very well. What do you come out with? So it's this... Ensemble. I hope you're wearing, wearing some stress. <laughs> it's it's an ensemble for uh, Bog Al Karak to celebrate his uh, mastery of these weak infidels. And it's a uh, we've got this big long train that you know goes like 15 feet behind Profanius. And it's got the big like poof in the back. That's awesome. And it's got he's it, like it's got the like the the multicolored veils that obviously were not meant to go together, but look really awesome. Yes, of course there are. That's so great. Oh, that's good. <laughs> A little bit of cross dressing always helps. Every, Every time. <laughs> Love it. It works for Milton Berle. It works for <laughs> Benny Hill. It works for Profanius of Bogal Karak. Yes. Excellent. Bogal-Karak. You look pretty, Profanius. Thank you, Ox. There are more. If well, you would also like to celebrate Why not? Rock. That sounds like a plan. There's still some cake if you want. <laughs> so we just trade. <laughs> <laughs> and I have like the cream all over my hand. Around, bumping hey. into each other. Are the goblins partaking in any cake or dresses? There are cake-covered helmets bumping into each other. <laughs> <laughs> they run around in random patterns. Excellent. Um, there's prob- they, they, they're not wearing any dresses, but there's probably little footprints and hand marks and snots and stuff <laughs> covering a lot of the dresses now. Oh, but come on, there has to be some for, you know, bridesmaids, the little ones, the, the little girls, something that would fit Goblin perfectly. That would look so awesome. Well, with the you hat. could you could put you could put the veils on their helmets. Oh, oh, they have veils, oh, helmet, no. veiled helmets. Excellent, covered in <laughs> cake. <laughs> oh goodness! The point of fact, there are little uh, flower girl dresses. So oh, just, flower girl. That's there are there are goblin related items. They look like they were tailored for a goblin. Absolutely slightly skinny. <laughs> I think Toad has a, a veil since he doesn't have a helmet. That makes sense. And he, a, has a he has a dress. He, he has a dress. Aww. I like him. It's pink. Oh, that's so cute. I hope there's a lot of ribbon on it too. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Yes, it's a very colorful oh, dress. It's on the veil. Yeah. For Sandia from this year's uh, Project Yarnway, so lots of textiles and the like. All right, 
Uh, so as uh, there's the dress party and the cake party going on, uh, you hear a booming voice, almost rival to your own, uh, Great Ox, uh, that says, Who comes to thieve so close to the great and wonderful Cathedral of Solace? A lot of little hands come up. <laughs> 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 well, I'm obvious, obviously curious if that would be the powerful enemy champion, and I will step out with my dresses that I've probably like tied a lot of them together because not one of them fits me. Oh, man, I totally see. Tell me if this is wrong, but I imagine that there's like puffy cake crinulated all around the mouth and maw with the, with the of course, the faceplate is up with cake. Because there was cake before you realized that the mouth and the cake. So the face <laughs> play up and the cake. And then there's like a hula skirt of different gowns that have kind of been cinched around the waist. Uh, so that's exactly. kind of the image that I have. Good. Exactly what I was thinking. Yes. <laughs> you see, there is definitely a champion. This is War Bishop Quarius, uh, who stands almost seven feet tall. So he's only about two feet shorter than. Uh, he is, in three words, pious, shiny, with gold, shiny armor. And shiny. I want that armor. Third word is stupid. So, uh, War Bishop Quarius uh, has a giant malice because he is of the order that does not spill blood with blades, so he will mash your head until it bleeds. And, I uh, want that too. Yeah. Oh, once for game, I can I get to pick all the dice from the pool, right? Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's mayhem. If you wish to cause mayhem, you you may ca you may declare mayhem at this point. Yeah, I will smash him down and whatever is coming between us or too close to us. I mm -hmm. want that weapon and that armor. Oh my gosh, I could I saw, I'm, I'm totally just picturing this. You know, he says great cathedral, and Profanius is like. Your cathedral is not good. Uh, yeah. Ox? <laughs> <laughs> that was totally profaneous. This moment, and Ox is like, stomp, stomp, stomp. <laughs> <laughs> they just drowned out by stomping metal boots. Oh, man. That's so good. So good. Poor War Bishop Corius. So, uh, at this point, as you can see, um, my suspicion dice was up to nine. You get nine extra dice to this action because you're causing mayhem. And uh, then that resets me back down to the default of this particular area. So that's pretty amazing how effectively you have made that choice. <laughs> so do I get to, you know, put all the hitting stuff and being tough and shouting and all that? If you wow. wish. Of yes. course I. Yes. Because if you, and the thing is, if you get enough uh, total successes, then you effectively kind of you will carry it forward and say that you've effectively driven off all of the protectors of Solace, and you guys can do whatever you want to the cathedral. That was just that much mayhem caused. Okay, then I'm using definitely my sword, and my plate mate will be helping too. Awesome. How many sword uses do you have? You have like five or six, right? I haven't been... Uh, five, yeah, but I haven't been using that much. I've been just running into people and stuff. So I have 16 dice. It better work. Oh, my lord. I have four. Wow. Wow. Yay! Wow. I got two. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Very <laughs> nice two successes there. <laughs> well done, Rich. Well done. Thank you. Well, now do I get the shiny armor? <laughs> Let's see how much... Uh, I'm going to say that you've had a cathedral, so I'm rolling two dice worth, and we'll add it together. There's seven items that you guys can scavenge. And... Yes. Okay, so... <laughs> the seven successes over. Yeah, yeah you guys defeated the morale of the entire protectorate of the Cathedral of Solace. You've taken the Cathedral of Solace, so Profanius, what happens to the Cathedral of Solace? Oh, we're totally smashing the hell out of it. Yes! Sweet. <laughs> uh, Ox, you get the giant hammer. <gasps> oh, I love my new hammer. The 
and the hammer itself has four uses. So if you want to use that instead of your great sword, you can have like a golf club uh, bag type deal of of what or you can just stick it in a goblin and make him carry it. Wait, just stick it in him. He probably won't carry it because it'd be dead. So you yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna put my sword for you know since since I have those dresses I just put it there so that it's kind of holding the dresses. That's very nice scabbard. Yes. Uh, wow. So profanity, you mash up the cathedral, which is kind of large and stone. Ox can help. Ox helps. How long do you want to spend on desecrating this cathedral? Are you going inside to do all the like? Oh nice gosh, parts? yes. We're breaking every window, we're smashing the altar. Pretty much everything that can be smashed is getting smashed. And I don't care how long it takes. And we're releasing the goblins. Oh yes, the g- <laughs> go cause havoc. In the name of Bog al Karak. Is there any sort of fountain or holy water? <laughs> there is a fountain with holy water, absolutely. So think cathedral. The color like... has changed. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Let's not go any further. But we 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 were we that's very good. Yes. yes. And there's the paintings and the artwork are now stained interestingly, glass. Um, interestingly uh, adorned. Mm. Maybe they look a little bit gobbly. You know. Yeah, there's moustaches <laughs> and eye patches and um you must have extra body really. parts added <laughs> <laughs> that would normally be clothed. <laughs> and such. It's been oh, added that's awesome. in paintings. <laughs> Especially I the most serious looking people in paintings. <laughs> <laughs> the more serious, the worse the graffiti. <laughs> So we're now having images of uh, Jack Nicholson's Joker at the museum. <laughs> a little bit there. With some prints in the background. Because yeah. it's awesome. Oh, I'm sure one of them is singing. So I'm going to rule that you get a good bit of time here at the cathedral. People are so uh, used to the war bishop uh, taking care of business that there's no way that they would think, oh, if there's a whole lot of orcs, that they would be hanging out at cathedral. So... Um, the 41st Brigade, uh, the Chancers, um, they are still at uh, at the palace, and then the rest of the cathedral guards have, have run away. So you guys have a bit of time to desecrate the Cathedral of Solace before you carry forward. Um, so, yeah. Is there anything else you scavenge from uh, the cathedral or the outlying area? Seven things. It might be too seven. many things. It might be too many things, but we'll see. Hmm. The GM has been far too I... generous, and it should be meaner. It's terrible. it's terrible. I think we should take at least one of the church benches with us, because, you know, we can use it as a ram or a club or whatever we need it for. <laughs> at least one. <laughs> I don't want to take anything. I just want to destroy it all. Ooh, um, they probably have some really shiny, like, um, like holy symbols of some sort, like the like the golden crosses or whatever. Oh, the absolutely, they do. Equivalent is. So we're we're going to loot as well, not just destroy. Yeah. Hmm. And the goblins would like to take some sort of vile bottle of uh, goblin blessed water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and bro- we should drink the wine. Since, mm-hmm. you know, oh, I would I not the do bread. that. Don't, oh, right. don't drink the wine. Okay. <laughs> we, we stay away from yeah. the wine then. I mean, go ahead, but I mean, don't. It's, okay. The goblins have been busy. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, we'll just leave it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I'll just I'll take a bottle of wine then. That's already been goblin blessed. So do. <laughs> <laughs> goblin blessed. <laughs> So oh, does a binge good. make it out uh, profanious, or, or do you insist that that should be crushed in the name of Bog al Karak? Why? We, well, we can repurpose the bench for Bog al Karak. It's, it's no longer a holy item of solace. It is now a ram of Bog al Karak. Correct. Perfect. 
You guys have done excellent. Let's take a moment, step back here, and look at the progress of uh, the Haver Brigade. You've broken through the Gable Gate uh, with explosions. You've fought your way through Footfall District, defeating the constables and stealing their hats. You've gorged on cake and stolen many gowns and dresses, defeated soundly the war bishop of Solace and desecrated the cathedral of Solace as a result. You now stand at the doorstep of the great palace, where inside is a very fancy party. Uh, it's a good thing we dress for body. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> uh, so there is there is a very obvious bridge, and because it is obvious, it is very very well guarded uh, by the thirty forty first brigade, um, and they have uh, they've been rushed into guard duty for tonight's ball. They are led by none other than, and this is told to you by my uh, exposition device, Toad, Brigadier Fink. Um, who is uh, not the nicest of fellows. And then just past the 41st Brigade, uh, if you get across the bridge, you'll have to fight the Royal Guard themselves. Mm -hmm. You have no bees. You have no dynamite. But you do have a bench. A ram. A, a, a ram bench. A benchy ram. I've thought it moss. Don't count me out. Um, and some wine. And a soiled yeah. wig. <laughs> Still have the hedgehog. Do not have a hedgehog. Very George. Oh, very George, yeah. What do you wish to do? Conference. Conference. The. I do think we need to discuss a plan here. Ox. Ox, come back. Okay, okay. But not, let's not take for too long. <laughs> how, how wide is this bridge? The bridge is relatively wide. It is large enough for the very fancy coaches to carry the, uh, the dainty ladies and dainty men. Is it as wide as a bench? It is wider than a bench. That's a shame. We could cut the bench in half. A saw appears out of nowhere. Uh, the the bridge itself is about thirty feet across. It is it okay. is large enough for groups to march again across. It's too bad we don't have two boxes. The goblins are all starting to like pull things out of seemingly nowhere and just laying them out. A brick in a sock, uh, the moss, the soiled wig, a book, some glasses, some keys, a saw, magic wand. What does that do? Pointing at the wand. Mm. Mm. One of the goblins is like dangerously close to poking the activation. <laughs> He's like actually looking. He's looking right down the wand, like you know, <laughs> off in his face. Stinky Go piece. point that at the bridge and see what happens. And make sure you stand in the middle of the road, <laughs> so they can see you. <laughs> okay, down the bridge walks, probably to some sort of what's the um like Sergio Leone, the um, with the bad and the ugly. Uh, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. La, la, la. yeah, little <laughs> goblin heads down the bridge, dragging this wand behind. Oh, and it's like like a, a two-handed sword resting on his shoulder. Now, now, now. Now, now, now. That's beautiful. That is awesome. So the, you've got like a, a clutch. The 41st Brigade, they're kind of hastily thrown together just for tonight's thing. They've been told to stand by the gate. Don't let anybody across the bridge. They're really not super into this. Um, and they see you, and they just start laughing. There's, it's about, you know, it's like 15 guys. He keeps, uh, Stinky Pete keeps walking. 
his, his eye is locked on whoever's like who looks like the leader. He's got a, he's got a swagger. This little girl, <laughs> stinky feet. Nice. He's gonna walk until he's like three feet a meter away, from, or maybe two meters, six feet away from the group if they don't make any attack. Look at that. Evening. What's that then? No, oh, some red. Got wand. You got a stick. We need you got a dog. Tell it to go chase it or something. Go away. Dog back there. Dog back there with ox. You got an ox? What are you doing with an ox, goblin? Ox no isn't. Ox isn't an ox. Stupid human. <laughs> what? He pulls out his nice sharp knife, starts walking forward. We'll cut you from ear to ear. And press the button. There's a button. <laughs> There's a button. I love the button. Here's what we're gonna do for the wand with one charge. I'm not yeah. rolling any dice against you. It's just you roll 1d6 for the wand. If it's 4, 5, or 6, you tell me what it is. If it's 1, 2, or 3, I'll tell you what it is. Okay, so no adding <laughs> anything. It's just... Yeah, just a straight up d6, because that d6. sounds amazing to me. Is that cool? We good with that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Don't even know what it does. I don't. <laughs> oh. Sweet. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, I had like I had like four ideas of what it could be, and I think I'm going to go with um, uh, it is it is the wand of meteors. Uh, so you press the button, and nothing happens uh, for a moment, and then the guy with the dagger starts stalking closer, Stinky Pete, and <laughs> continue pushing the button, and then you're up in the sky. And then there's this like purple swirl of clouds, and then up far, far away up in the stratosphere, you see these fiery things come shooting forward. And uh, Ox and Profenius, where the two of you we would have had to kind of let the cathedral to come watch this. I oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so we're actually probably just on the other side of. That road there, which no one can really see except me, as I point to it. I can um, totally see it. Yeah. I have the map. Yeah. Um, but anyway, no, we're probably just on the other side of that that road, as we because we sat we stopped and had this discussion of what are we going to do, and then we were like, okay, yeah, go point the wand. So we're we're not too far away. Good. Uh, so you get to see this as well as the sky. Uh, some. Great sky. It's probably Bagal Karak. He's got some connections with the sky. Of course guy. it is. Oh. Of course it is. So this probably wasn't even the wand. It's just a thing that happens when the meteors come crashing down. Uh, it, unfortunately, the aiming of the meteors, not so hot. Uh, so the cathedral takes a couple of meteors. Not sure you're so worried about that. Uh, there are a couple of meteors that go shooting into the palace. A great number of them go... Um, into the the rivers surrounding the palace. A couple hit the bridge. One takes down the gate to the bridge. A uh, number of the 41st Brigade are hit. Uh, there is actually a gate house uh, that is in, in it's set on fire. And it's these meteors that are, you know, about this big, but the impact from them, enough to throw cobblestone dust everywhere. There's flames, and then for some reason these things were on fire. That doesn't even make a whole lot of scientific sense. Uh, that that's what happens for a good you know, like fifteen seconds. Meteors crash everywhere, and uh, so you tell me, Stinky Pete, did the meteor hit just that one guy, or did it take out the guards behind him? Took out the guy with the the knife. Nice. Cool. So he's closing, 
coming closer and closer, and then about a you know like a, a, a football sized in football, as in the European size, a football sized uh, meteor clunks him right on the head, and uh, he falls. Stinky Pete does an obscene gesture to the other guards, and then just starts strolling back <laughs> towards the rest of the goblins. <laughs> Still with a swagger, he's in no rush. Sweet. Uh, so yeah, you get to see that miracle that was performed by you, Profanius. I'm pretty sure. Of course. All hail Bog Al Karak. Did you do that? No, Bog Al Karak did. Hmm. He's mighty. Of course he is. That means he has blessed our mission, and we should proceed. Yay, let's proceed. I have my hammer ready. Nice. All right, so uh, we've got a group of goblins and uh, Profanius and or Ox uh, heading across uh, the bridge. Uh, you have to kind of step lightly around the, the molten and warped gate uh, but then you can run across the cobblestone bridge. There are a couple of holes they have to jump over and around. And uh, then you come to where you see there are a number of royal guards. And the suspicion meter, by, by the way, with the meteor shower, unfortunately, has gone up a good bit. Uh, so there's, there's quite a bit of suspicion that something is amok. You don't say. Yes, something is amok. The cathedral is burning. They've noticed that. Uh, the Conclave of Magicians have been called. The Royal Guard have been told that upon penalty of death, none shall enter the palace in this time uh, of meteor showers and other unpleasantness. Uh, but you do see here the like, soft wafting sounds of orchestral music as the party's still going on inside. Uh, there are two, and I'm not sure if you all have seen Conan the Destroyer, so I'll do my best to describe the super awesome royal guards, but they're like huge plate mail, and then they've got like a little face plate thing that looks like a half moon that comes across their face, almost like a weird smile. And they, they pop that up, and they've got these crazy plumes over top of their head. And of course, the tabard with the, the symbol of the, the royal house, including Prince, uh, who you're after. And uh, they swap their face guard down, and they've got. Nice, very, very shiny-looking swords and big, big, thick shields, and there are a total of eight of them, and they're all standing in front of a huge iron uh, pair of doors uh, that lead into the palace, uh, and they're they're not going to let you in. What are it's you doing? Thing we, Go it's a good thing we have the rum. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Let's Go use it. Orcs. <laughs> what? Go away after all this trouble? No. <laughs> the uh, the goblins form a uh, the coat tower with a soiled wig on them and glasses and a top hat and uh, wave a bit of a page from their mostly destroyed book <laughs> and the wine and say, we he we here to party. We no orc. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Goblin. If you want to convince them that you are just here for the party, <laughs> even though upon penalty of death they are not supposed to let any inside, and uh, they are not completely stupid, uh, I'm going to let you roll dice on that. <laughs> cool. The goblins <laughs> are stupid, though, so they're going to try. <laughs> All right, so they've got six dice at base. And then uh, their suspicion dice, I'm going to go ahead and use three out of that. So that'll be nine dice you're rolling against. Okay. Well, they're kind of creating a distraction. They're hiding. Stolen glasses. Coat. Book. Soiled wig. <laughs> top hat. To not die. The drive oh, and the wine. Die. The wine. Mm hmm. Oh, what was that? The trash is tiny, you get two dice from the drive. 
Yep. Oh, so that's, oh, I'm up to 11 then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's to not die, so I'll cross one off of that use. Got to almost want to succeed. <laughs> oh! Three successes. That's... You got three? Oh! oh three and I got three. three. Oh man, who <laughs> dies? I don't even know. I could add something. You should. No, no, say that's uh, dead good. Ah, is it dead good? So that's two more. Yes. Yeah. Like it? Uh, no, you get a reroll. Yeah, dead good to reroll. reroll. Okay. Uh, clear that. And, uh, I'm out of dead goods, though, you guys. Someone else will have to take over. You need to start telling people what to do, Profanius. <laughs> One, two, three, oh. four. Jesus. Ah. <laughs> okay. Here's a moment where you're thinking, of course, these guys are not quite so stupid, but Captain Goldflash he has great hair. Looks down at you and says, Oh, Julia. Yes, well, please just open the door for Julia. But the orcs are not allowed in. <laughs> Julia, come on in. Save a dance for me. They waves the kind of soiled piece of paper from a book <laughs> and, and wobbles in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. That's all this guy's got. The little guards are looking at Captain Goldflash like, you're into that? Like, seriously? And, of course, he gives them a look of, like, she's hot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, but the royal guards are dude bros. <laughs> that's, that's totally cool. I actually just sort of want to see what happens inside the ball now. Oh, by the way, can I just you add do. the fact that as the goblins pass, um, what was the guard, the captain? Goldflash. Goldflash. Captain Goldflash. One hand kind of caresses his face. <laughs> as oh, it man. It's kind awesome. of like, in a kind of like... <laughs> kind of way. <laughs> as it passes. He's all, he's all like, oh, man. You're <laughs> looking over at the other guys like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> He's like staring at the, goblin, like the tiny goblin butt in the coat, you know, just imagining. Even though it's only like two feet from the ground. But he's, <laughs> he's got plans. Uh, and then the doors open and you are let into the very fancy ball. There are food, there are food sandwiches that are cut into tiny little squares. Uh, uh, there's a giant ice. From that? I guess I didn't. No suspicion created there. If you want to create mayhem at this point, you're welcome to. But, uh, oh, well, I think it's other people. I, I'm, I'm in. Let's see what the others are in, doing, man. I guess. You're in. There are people in dresses at uh, least as nice as what you saw in the, in the, in the party. In the I, I imagine that the coat, because I've used up the coat and the wig and stuff, they all just collapse to the ground and in a, in a, like a, just a flurry of movement, and then the goblins are gone. Who knows nice. That oh, that's awesome. I love that. Maybe that a table jiggle, jiggles slightly. It's like a huge ice sculpture of like this beautiful, uh, like an entire, I don't even know what you call a lot of horses. Shit, what is it called? Stampede? Like a, a stampede of horses, all of ice coming out of like the, the like a tidal wave kind of thing. So it's like a tidal wave list. A bunch of horses that come out of the water. And it's a gigantic ice sculpture. Um, and then and there's, of course, a full string orchestra jamming out. You see the prince because you know what he looks like, Toad. You can tell the others as you guys are all sneaking out behind That prince. Like, yeah. So back outside to Profanius and Ox, you've been denied entry. And, in fact, uh, uh, Goldflash says, uh, dudes, I think we should totally kill these orcs. I think it's time to use the ram. Okay. For Bog Al Karak. Nice. Exactly. So we do it together. All right. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of my remaining suspicion pool here. I'm desperate to kick some ass here. So we got eight dice coming against you guys. I think I think you should roll because you're the lead 
rammer person. Okay. The rammer. Um, Do the ram stuff. Think his official title. Yes. I'm going oh, to be wow. shouting a lot. And just to you, <laughs> Profanius. Happy? What? What happened? Just <laughs> look at his dice. Wow, that is abysmal. Oh. I'm looking for four, fives, or sixes. I have one. Oh no! How much of your suspicion did you use for that? I I actually used like I used four on you or three on you, and I used two more. I'm gonna add another suspicion dice. Great. Screw you guys. Have you adjusted your count? I don't think I don't it think they go away deplete. when you use them, Rich. Yeah, it doesn't deplete. Oh, okay. Well, no, he said two pools, so you like you keep the overall suspicion, but then it gives you a pool of dice oh, that yeah. you use, and then it re- refreshes over time. It's it's mm-hmm. weirdly described, but that's the way I was taking it. Is that it like it goes up to eight, but I really only kind of have eight dice, but then the eight stays because that's how much mayhem dice you guys could take. Because I'm not supposed to deplete away the suspicion because it could become mayhem. All right, that's the way I was reading it. I could be wrong. That that. That's how I did it. Okay. So do Dice I get one, one die for the ram? Yep. Sure. It gets used up somehow. Um, I put it in the... I, I wrote it on my sheet, and I've got two uses out of it, so... Nice. That's one of two. Okay, so do I get any dice for your help? Nope. Um, well, only Prophenius tells you what to do. I'm stupid. You should totally tell me what to do. Yeah, I will totally tell you what to do. <laughs> so here's what we're doing. We're going to take the ram and hit as many of these guys as possible before ramming into the door. Oh, so it's kind of like a whirlwind, for like this, that, and then forward. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. I can do that. I totally imagine that conversation taking place, like the back and forth there. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay. That's nice. Oh my gosh. So I rolled one success, you roll one failure. Uh, So I... These guys are actually incredibly tough. So I think you got five successes, but their morale is greater than five. So I think this is going to go into a pitch battle. It's going to be more than one round. These guys are not going down on one shot. Uh, so I'm going to say that with their elite armor, their hooked halberds, uh, and they even have some magic items, that these guys, you, you knock down about four or five of them with the, the, the bench, but then it cracks a little bit. Uh, and then a couple of them jump onto you, Ox, and uh, one of them stabbing really, really hard towards your face, but he's, he's stabbing mostly cake. Uh, but you are going to take one wound from the stabbing near your face. Uh, yes. It's mostly because some cake got in your eye. Um, but, uh, and then Profanius, they don't leave you alone either. Captain Goldflash totally thinks you're a girl, and he's going he's gonna to oh shove you to the ground. <laughs> And start uh, thwacking you over the head because he thinks that that's a, a mask you have on. I'm not <laughs> sure why he thinks that. Uh, but you take a wound uh, from getting shoved to the ground there. That's the best I could come up with off the top of that. <laughs> So, what do you guys do? Um, is the ram completely broken or can we use it again? It, no, let's get one more use. It, so, you got yep. one more use. But this last one you know is going to crack the ram. Do we want to use it again? You can use it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that even without the ram, that door is not going to stand up to you. Ox, I think you should be very frugal. I mean, you could take this bench home with you, and if you break it, that pretty much ruins the chances of taking it home. Okay, I'm going to use the hammer just because, you know, it should scare them because they know whose hammer it is. You can and I'm going to shout that very loudly. Look at the hammer. You know who this belonged to. It's mine now. <gasps> what? No! Awesome. Okay, so Profanius, do you care to tell me what to do now? I, you can only use it once. Yep. Oh, no! <laughs> that was your only cunning plan. <laughs> that was it. That was them. the whole plan. <laughs> right, so it's only four dice. Yeah. You could cause some... Oh, wait, you've already caused mayhem, haven't you? Never mind, Actually, I could cause mayhem. 
You've I'm going to be... And I can get, tell somebody a cunning plan to do. <laughs> <laughs> can I use my plate mail so I get the fifth? Alright, you've got uh, eight dice coming against you. Oh, I don't like my odds. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Three against. Oh no! One. <laughs> you need to do a dice shaming picture of this. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we need to take a picture of this. Holy crap. <laughs> Taking a picture of you. How do I do the thing? Oh, okay. Look at these dice! Ah. <laughs> Can you take a picture of other people? Darn it. <laughs> Dang it, there's like four pictures of everyone but me. I usually get present to my to everyone and I'm not being <laughs> Okay, there we go. My last one. Oh. Wow. Okay, there we go. I've I've captured the picture. That's that was the worst die roll pair in the world of Everest. Oh, you should have had it marked. The little circle around it. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll just <laughs> wait. How do I mark them? There's a picture of Alex completely face palming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here we go. All right. I'm gonna present. Uh, present. 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 And I click on me. There we go. That looks like my despicable role. That was fun. Clearing you assholes. <laughs> uh, so you break the you break the bench as you shatter open the doors. The music comes to a stop as uh, the ox and profanes. What were you doing? Like you were just cheering them on? What did you do to Gold Flash? What happened? Oh, no, no. Uh, Profanius was going to um, demand that he remove himself from Profanius' person in the name of Bog al Karak. <laughs> using a sword. Nice. By the way, I wasn't we, using the bench. I used needed, the hammer. Yeah, I think uh, this is a separate action. I need to know how this went down between Captain Gold Flash and Profanius because that's a totally separate action. Totally separate action. I don't have many uh, dice left, so I'm only rolling seven against you. Oh, good. Well, I'm default six, because these are royal guards, guys. These guys are awesome. And the balls. Do bros. Oh, my goodness. Um, I feel like being mayhemy. Oh. Because I can be, basically. Um... So, ten dice just from that. Wow. I'm hitting stuff. My armor is protecting me from whatever is happening. I have a swad. That's despicable. And I am calling on Bog Al Karak to show his true powers to these infidels. This is going to be a lot of dice. I hope you roll. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, snap. I got four successes. <laughs> this is, uh, wow. You beat me, but still. By ten. Just by a few. Well, it, was, it was really close, Rich. It was really close. <laughs> Dang it. All right, so Captain Goldflash. Uh, you tell him to re remove yourself from remove himself. You tell him there's some removing of persons, and uh, I think he ends up with somehow in the drink. I think that that would, that would be a thing that would happen to Gold Flash. He's uh, tossed aside, and then you carry forward in your mayhem, and you help Ox take down the door, and then it kind of spills out. Right, all the music stops. What happens to the beautiful ice sculpture of like the tidal wave and horses? Stampede thing. Anything there? 
Or they left. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm going to borrow one of Alex's goblins because yeah. I can. Um, I totally picture being, you know, so th there's the beautiful the sculpture, and then all of a sudden there's like like little goblin eyes and face, and then it just like <laughs> cracks down the middle. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Borrow as in throw a goblin at the ice sculpture, or there's an no, ice no. goblin at no, no. the missing. <laughs> okay, cool. Just borrowed into the narration. That's awesome. Yeah, I just yeah. I just like the idea of the like the goblin face peering through, all refracted, and that is kind of cool. I like that image. So it shatters, and there's just one goblin in the center of the party. <laughs> so my doll is broken ice. <laughs> wow. Okay, so um. Uh, there he is, Prince Theodore Holstein. No relation to Toad, even though they uh, have a very similar sounding first name. Uh, and he's surrounded by several fancy ladies, as well as the Queen Mum. And uh, they had no expectation that anyone could take down those doors, because after centuries of those doors, the palace has never, palace has never been breached. Freiburg has stood proud. Uh, and now the Havoc Brigade has broke open uh, those doors, and they stand in the fancy ballroom that happens to be right right inside those gates. So you don't even have any other... It's like just a wide open space. Like you walked into uh, a ballroom at a conference hotel or conference center right there. Uh, big sweeping staircases up to the upstairs, but down here on the main... Uh, ballroom floor with very nice crystal chandeliers and, uh, and the string quartet, which is off to the side there. Lots of uh, red velvet, uh, various seats and cushions and the like off where they were playing. But now they've stopped because they're freaked out by Ox and Profanius. Uh, they haven't seen the goblins, so that didn't freak them out. And there's the prince, and he says, what, 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 What's going on here? <laughs> I'm just going to shout, goblins, distraction, walk toward the okay. prince and try to put oh, him on my shoulder and start walking oh, out. Oh, could I interrupt and just preempt that move slightly? Like, okay. Just at the point where you say goblins, distractions, a goblin appears on um, the uh, prince's shoulder with a suspiciously heavy-looking sock <laughs> and just smacks <laughs> across the face. Oh, God, that's awesome. There are no dice because that is too great. Okay. Sock with a brick in it does take down the prince, and he starts to fall, like, oh, faint. And then the ox uh, crosses forward in a few bounds and catches him before he hits the ground, throws him over his shoulder, over her shoulder. And I start running out because I, I have what I came here for. Oh, cool. Uh, so the, the, you hear the queen mom, she screams, guards, guards. Uh, and, then she, and then she says, release the beast of the palace gardens upon them. And you're running out. Where are you headed? Well, back the way we came, I assume. Yeah, yeah back to palace guards. So there's probably some more guards that are going to be giving chase. Uh, we don't have to play through the chase if you don't like. Uh, we mind. could call. I would it... just like to say that um, the do the goblins are riding the dog out alongside um, 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 ox. Uh, one at the, one at the back is grinning. Extremely wide grin. Um, <laughs> he's left um, and out of the queen's m m some little handbag. There is a dead fish, some very stinky rotting fish. <laughs> so the credits start to roll with the Havoc Brigade taking off and leaving the city. What is it that we see Profanius doing? Like, what, what was the camera catch Profanius doing as you're escaping the city of Freiburg with the prince? So, um, just inside the gate, the gable gate, um, just as they're about to exit, Profanius says, I will catch up with you. And he turns and there's a yeah, a suspiciously cloaked figure, kind of up against the wall, and um, they exchange a few discreet kind of signs that you know that we've never seen before. But they're just sort of hand gestures. And Profania says, "The uh, the key cathedral is ours. Make sure it does not fall again." And then he turns with a swoosh of his cloak and strides out of the gate after the others. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, what's the closing shot on the ox uh, as she's carrying away the prince? Any, anything that the camera picks up during credits rolling? Um, there are a few cards that are trying to stop me, but, you know, I use the prince and just smack them like that. <laughs> <because nobody knows. laughs> that. <laughs> and, you know, then I run. <laughs> Oh, that's great. And then, then, like, the credits roll, and then it does, like, that last little bit where it says the production company, and then there's the after bit, and it's in the Warlord Skull Smasher's tent, and he's trying to question the dead body of the prince. Uh, but he hasn't quite figured it out. He's like, somebody wake him up. <laughs> Another brick to the head. <laughs> yeah, brick to the head followed by being smashed into guards. Unfortunately, he did not survive the trip. Oh. Uh, so concludes the wonder that is the Havoc Brigade. Uh, feedback, what do you guys think about Havoc Brigade? Which uh, I like the mechanics. I like the um, um, the dead good and the cunning plan things. That's a really nice mechanic. That is kind of like to get your special power, you're giving it to somebody else. Thing. I thought that that's nice. It was a lot of fun. I really liked it. The goblins were the best. Yes, the goblins. I, I love the characters, all of them. <laughs> we managed to make, you know, so much mayhem around the city. That was so much fun. For once, uh, you don't have to play anything doing good, do good as you choose. You know, you can do whatever. Yeah. That was fun. I really ah. liked it. That was, that was a good time. Andrea, how would you compare and contrast? Like, what were some of your thoughts from the first time that you ran? <laughs> um, this one was actually, believe it or not, a little less silly. Um, <laughs> we spent literally an entire session on cake and how cake can be used as a disguise and how to get the orcs into the palace using cake as a disguise. I threw that cake out there just for you to see how I you want to handle cake. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to go through another four-hour discussion about cake. There's No, I was totally... That's why the bishop came running in. <laughs> I was, like, prepared, <laughs> because you said that the cake was the distraction. The cake. That was, no, it was, it was uh, actually... This, uh, very, this was a very fun hmm. experience. Yeah. Uh, as I said uh, before we even... Before we went on live, uh, the equipment list for the goblins is just a joy to work with. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you found very like clever, like tactical ways to use almost everything. Yeah, you snuck it yeah. in very, very well. I didn't get to use the assorted moss, and I mean, I used the dog in the role play, but not in the uh, in any role. Well, I use up the dog. Those I know. Smart. I don't want to use up the dog. <laughs> That's. I mean, <laughs> oh. can't hey. be a dog. Oh. Oh. Yeah. But he doesn't have a swing. <laughs> six, six goblins could never ride that dog. No. no. That's a bit too small. And I don't Good. think I used the rusty saw that got mentioned. You, yeah, it did, you worked everything in, which blew me away. Um, and now I've got to figure out how to go away from camera because I'm still on the camera thing and I can't stop the broadcast. That's interesting. Oh, there we go. I turned off camera. Cool. Uh, so that thank says you. We're still live. Yeah, it's I still. Says. No, I I turned off the camera thing, but I didn't turn off the broadcast. Oh, I see. Okay. I had the camera capture so that I could show oh. the dice chain. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for playing Havoc Brigade again. Grant Howitt's Patreon is a way that you can pick it up free of charge, and if you want to back him, it's totally worth it because he makes lots of crazy little silly fun games to throw out there for you, and it's not too much to back. Um, and it will encourage a person who's very creative. Um, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and close this out. And uh, thanks for watching. Please give us feedback, and don't forget to subscribe uh, to me and the YouTube so you can see lots more from the Intercontinental Group of Awesome and other things that we participate in. And have a great afternoon or evening. <laughs>